What book would you recommend to people who haven't finished a book since high school? The Martian. The book had me laughing out loud. My son did not know how a book about a man alone struggling for survival on Mars could be funny but it is. I was going to put this if no one else did. Fully agree as one was fantastic. The author's second book, Artemis, was a bit disappointing in comparison. Don't get me wrong, it was an enjoyable book. It just wasn't up to the same level of awesome that was The Martian. Agreed. His writing style didn't fit the character nearly as well as in The Martian. Mark Watney apparently was just a polished extension of the author in real life in terms of wit and sarcasm but unlike the author Watney was not afraid of flying. Didn't realize Andy Weir wrote another book. Me need to check it out. He also wrote The Egg. Edit, stop spending money on me. Also, I would highly recommend Kershaw's narration of the short story for those interested. It's honestly my favorite video they've ever made. Jurassic Park. I know reading books after seeing the movies can sometimes be dull, but the book is way darker than the movie. Muldoon driving around drunk as duck on whiskey, swearing like a sailor and blowing up Dinos with a rocket launcher for example. This is one case where I couldn't actually tell you which was better, movie or book. But it was also a case of where they changed so much and it still works for both. I won't spoil it but different characters live in the book that die in the movie and vice versa. And a few characters have radically different personalities but I would still highly recommend both reading the book and watching the movie. Yeah, it's really hard to compare them, it's basically two different stories. Or the best way I can put it, an alternate reality. Edit, should have mentioned the second book is equally interesting and very similarly like an alternate reality. Would recommend any Michael Crichton book. You know they're good when almost all of them have been made into blockbuster movies. I can't ducking stand Lex in the book. On my second read currently. Tim is a lot more interesting though. Hess the one good with computers. And agreed Lex is a whiny bitch. I guess that's why they gave her some of his traits and switched the age in the movies or her character would be annoying as hell. Good move. Any book by John Ronson. He's a journalist who dives into cults, psychopaths, politics and other interesting stuff. Really accessible writing style. His TED Talk on the Psychopath Test made me want to read his book about it. Very intriguing all the way through. Also he sneaks into the Bohemian Grove with Alex Jones and Joe Rogan. It's funny as duck. I forget which book it's in edit, I got it wrong he was just with Alex Jones. I don't know why I thought he was with Rogan. I think he tells it on the Rogan podcast. And before Alex Jones got famous. In the book The Secret Rulers of the World. World War Z Lots of short stories that tie into the greater story. I illegally downloaded it when I was really poor and liked it so much I brought it out of appreciation. Edit, greater. Second edit, not correcting spelling, whatever I do what I want smile. Also it's important to note the book is very different from the movie. Like the movie, love the book. The only similarities between the book and movie is the name and zombies. Going to argue that point only because the zombies are so very different in the two. In the book the zombies are so scary and how slow but persistent they are. My biggest gripe with the movie was totally throwing that out for zombie waves, totally dope in other settings. Iker. Brooks did a kick-ass job with using his zombies properly. Goes to show that you don't have to make every zombie fast and threatening to get the job done, Brooks' description of his zombies always freaked me out. You could try to run, but if they're everywhere, you're merely playing with yourself. Creepy stuff. I get so frustrated with fast zombies. The thing that makes zombies interesting to me is that they seem beatable, but they are relentless. Humans have to rest zombies don't. That's what interesting. We have plenty of monsters and foes with superpowers that on the surface look unbeatable but then have a weakness which allows them to be beaten. Zombies invert that trope. On the surface they appear easily beaten but they have the hidden strength of never needing to stop which makes them formidable. Defeating them means never resting, never letting your guard down. I love the constraints of that concept. That's what I also love about them. When you see something full speed running towards something, you could tell it's really trying hard to kill that thing. If it were chasing you, you'd also probably be filled with adrenaline and shock, so you won't get much thinking out of it, you would obviously run for your life. If it were slow, 
you'd think a whatever then casually walk away. Then it appears again, you begin to walk more, again it appears, then you begin to run, soon, you tire, and it catches up and kills you. I think that's what freaks me out most about zombies, and also the monster from it follows. It's slow, but just the eerie feeling it portrays is almost saying I may be slow, but I'll get you is just so frightening to think about. How you could push your limits to try and escape it, but in the end, they always win. In a way, that's how humans used to hunt. Pursuing prey until they were exhausted. Humans are slower in the short term but the best distance animals on the planet. Bar zombies of course. Howl's Moving Castle by Diana Wynne-Jones. I hadn't read a book purely for pleasure in years. This August, I saw it on a bookshelf at my parents' home. Once I started, I couldn't put it down. Literally. I opened that book at 10 a.m., finished it at 8 p.m. the same day. Please go read it. Edit, oh. Oh my gosh. I can't believe how much traction this comment got. Thank you all for the awards, upvotes, and replies. It's wonderfully magical to see the power that books have in connecting and inspiring us. Smile. Diana Wynne Jones's entire catalog is really quite excellent, but Howl's Moving Castle has always been my favorite. It's just constantly imaginative, clever, funny, and whimsical. And the cast is great and fairly unique. If I ever find myself in a reading lull, this is almost always the book I choose to get me out of it. As a bonus, there is an excellent Studio Ghibli adaptation that diverges heavily from the novel but still retains much of the setting and characters. It almost plays out like a what-if scenario, and it's one of my favorite book-to-movie adaptations. Definitely worth the read, and watch. I saw the Studio Ghibli adaptation of Howl's Moving Castle ages ago. I was so surprised at how different the movie and novel are from each other. After reading the novel though. I prefer the book over the movie. Mostly because of how lovely the depth, complexity, and interactions of the characters in the novel are. Now, I know that Teresa limited how much material you can fit into a movie from a book, but I really wish the characters could have been given more depth. That said, Studio Ghibli has such amazing production quality. Their interpretation of Howl's Moving Castle is still wonderful on its own. All in all, I see the main difference between the two is that the novel primarily focuses on the characters and their interactions, while the movie really seeks to immerse the viewer in the world of Howl's Moving Castle. However, both definitely did a fantastic job in their own right. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy 100% funny as hell, short chapters, and while the vocabulary isn't difficult, the humor requires careful reading, and sometimes rereading. Humor requires reading, and sometimes rereading this reminds me of the first and only three seasons of Arrested Development. So much setup to the Lucille jokes, the hand jokes, and so many dirty one-liners that go over your head the first time you see it. Rewatch is a must. I stand by Arrested Development and 30 Rock being the best written sitcoms of the 21st century. The Princess Bride. It's a delightful read, it's easy, and everyone I know that has read it has absolutely loved it. I've recommended it to several friends, including like 8 people in a workbook club, and again, 100,100 across the board. Edit, I love that so many people agree. Thanks for the awards. It's a wonderful book and a wonderful movie. Is this a kissing book? I recently picked up reading as a quarantine hobby after not reading a book for fun since probably middle school. I realized quickly that the reason I always thought I hated reading was because other people were telling me what to read and it was usually subjects that didn't interest me at all. I thought about which non-book things I enjoy reading, and realized I have an easy time getting completely engrossed in Wikipedia articles, ask Reddit threads and blog posts about unresolved mysteries, paranormal events, survival and nature stories. So I bought a few books that fit into those common themes and it's been great. This probably isn't a lot for some people, but since March I've finished 5 books, up from 0 for the 10 to 15 years prior. I think if you think about it like this, you'll have a much easier time finding a book for yourself by just looking up bestsellers in the categories that you decide interest you. In case you're also interested in my themes, I've read and loved, Into the Wild Dead Mountain, The Untold True Story of the Dyatlov Pass Incident 438 Days, An Extraordinary True Story of Survival at Sea The Road Between a Rock and a Hard Place Hope this is helpful to somebody. The road is so heavy. It stayed with me longer than anything else I've read. I really dug it. It was not fun of course but was really easy to read, yet engaging.